Alright, quick rundown on what I think is the most obvious and most catastrophic and biggest mistake of science ever. Uh, the MV versus one half MV squared controversy. Kinetic energy versus momentum. Uh, it started in 1650 with uh, 53, 57 with Leibniz, who, said, who was basically saying to Descartes and Newton that your science is to atheists, and so he basically just made up a story about some concept of MV squared. And it didn't get off the ground, but in the 1720s, um, Madame Chartelet, a French uh, woman of some means, uh, published lots of papers saying that, yes, there's some credibility to this idea of MV. Um, she gained some uh, establishment credibility in the fact she did some experiments, or she illustrated some experiments with clay and sand. Um, both can be understood to be not very good mediums for collecting energy. Um, are measuring it, not very good rulers. Um, and, uh, and in the 1800s, they stuck a one-half in front of it. So uh, uh, something they proved for 100 years, they changed by 50%. Um, an incredible uh, event in terms of not very credible as science. So the theory of kinetic energy has no <clears throat> backing in real evidence or historical record of any real evidence. And it's just proclaimed as a truth. Um, they even say things like F equals MA is Newton's formula and uh, contrive, derive mathematics to make up this story. So the story is defeated by something as simple as a lever. I can put 100 joules of energy in in a heavy object close to the fulcrum and two notches away from the fulcrum. I can create twice as much energy leaving. There's no way to avoid what will take place. I put a two mass here and I put a one mass here. I'm going to get twice the velocity here. And by doing that, by this formula, it says I have twice as much energy. So it's a free energy device right there. Uh, they keep saying it takes four times more gas to go twice as fast. No evidence. Uh, the 8-pound bowling ball going 16 miles an hour or the 16-pound ball going 8 miles an hour. Momentum says they have the same energy. Um, they say, physics says, science says, somehow the 8-pound ball has more energy, that somehow it will knock things more distances. If I add up all the distance of all the atoms the 8-pound ball hits into, somehow it will move more atoms more places. And it won't. The 16-pound ball will move things less distance um, per unit of impact, but it will clearly move more things, okay, in total, and therefore... If you add up the distances, they move atoms, it'll be the same. The same for the 10-ton train going 5 miles an hour or the 5-ton train going 10 miles an hour. They're going to do the same work in the universe. If you crash them into springs, uh, the 10-ton train, and uh, then put the 5-ton train on the same spring, it's going to leave with twice the velocity, and you're going to conserve the momentum, and the kinetic energy formula is going to be revealed to be nonsensical. They're simple experiments that are performed. You crash a one-mass object into... Uh, a, a, a one mass object that isn't moving, have them stick elastically, <clears throat> I mean inelastically, and uh, there's a claim that it lost half the energy. But clearly there's no room for half the energy to be lost anywhere. There's no heat, there's no sparks, there's no huge noises, none of that stuff. You can drop the weight, you can do it lots of different ways of combining the two objects. It clearly leaves exactly as you would expect logically and by momentum's argument it leaves with almost 99 percent of the energy it started with tiny tiny losses to friction uh, and noise and sound and sparks uh, not one half the energy so it makes no sense uh, the biggest one we have is the only piece of evidence so there's no evidence of this eh, this formula being correct no physical evidence proving one half mv squared and all we have is a professor lewin experiment where he crashes a one mass object into a two mass object on an air track and produces a product of a two-mass object going two-thirds the velocity. So it's got, you know, if there was 100 momentums here, there's 130 going this way and 130 going this way. And you add that up, it's 166. So it's a free energy experiment. It demonstrates free energy. Yet nobody can capitalize on it. Somehow nobody can build this simple uh, device where you just bang a one-mass object into a two and then the two into a four and the four into an eight. And then you put it into a lever and you just shoot the, the other side with, you know, at least three times the energy, uh, you know, going back the other way. And you just keep multiplying that and then you have six times the energy and then you have nine times and then you have, you know, you just can create free energy and <clears throat> free motion. Obviously, this device can't be built. It won't work. Okay. Even though 
theoretically, there's no reason why it shouldn't work based on the formula. So there's obviously, there's no evidence. The history is horrible. Every example you can provide of a mechanical system, it fails to get right answers. It doesn't predict the truth. It doesn't predict um, what actually happens in the real world. Uh, if I did it in space and I put a gun in space, in my spaceship, and I shot a bullet out one side and I shot and let the gun fly out the other side, are you going to argue that uh, because I sent 2,000 joules that way and only two joules the other way, that somehow the spaceship is going to radically turn? No, of course it's not, because there's no such thing. And uh, there should be someone capable of making an argument explaining how any of what I've just explained here is wrong. How the lever doesn't work that way, or bowling balls don't work that way, or trains don't work that way, or springs don't work that way. There has to be some explanation for why you have zero evidence for something, and you all assert it has a fact. This is a fact of the universe. When every indication, every piece of evidence indicates this is the fact. This is what Newton, Galileo, and Descartes believed. This is what they got right answers believing in. If they had believed in this, they wouldn't have gotten right answers. That's the fact. And here you're selling something that's 300-year-old garbage. It wasn't right 300 years ago. It wasn't right 200 years ago. It wasn't right 100 years ago. And here you're still selling it a story that has no evidence to back it up and creates preposterous theoretical nonsense. And it's not good physics, it's not the truth, it's not honest. Um, you know, what's the explanation? How are you getting away with this? Why are you defending it? Please explain. If you're going to defend it, explain how the lever isn't a free energy device. Explain how this machine can't be built. Explain how you can make free energy free momentum. Explain how free momentum is not free energy. And free energy, and free momentum in the sense that it goes outside of the system. It's not trapped inside. This experiment doesn't trap the energy between two objects. So this isn't energy trapped in a system. This is energy free to exit the, into the universe. You're putting 130 momentums that way and 30 momentums that way and those are real momentum. And you only start with 100. It's free energy, and we can't do it, and it can't be defended.